Okay, so now that we've looked at qualitative data, we're going to look at how to organize quantitative data. So quantitative data is going to be organized using a relative frequency distribution. However, we're going to use classes to group our data together. So instead of looking at every single individual unique value that we see, we're gonna create groups because we wanna organize the data. Well, if we list out every single data value, that's not really helping to organize it, each with a frequency of one, that does nothing. So we're gonna create classes, okay, which are groups of quantitative data. Each class has a class width, which is the difference between the first value of the of one class and the first value of the consecutive class. The class width must be the same throughout the entire distribution. And we'll see this when we actually get into this. So the example that we're going to be looking at, we're looking at um, a set of exam scores from 20 students based on their final exam in a statistics course. So we're going to create a relative frequency distribution using classes for this data. Okay, so just like we did with the qualitative distribution, I'm going to start with three columns. So the first column is going to be the exam scores. Then we're going to have the frequency and the relative frequency. couple lines to separate these columns. All right, so now looking at my exam scores, I'm looking for the smallest score on the exam, which looks to be like a 50. And then the highest score on the exam, oh, we had someone who scored a 100. So I need to go from 50 to 100. Since we're talking about exam scores, the best way to do this is to go by tens, okay? Because if you get a, if you get in the next group of tens on an exam, then you have the next letter grade. So that's a way that it makes sense. So I'm gonna go from 50 to 59. I'm not going to 60 because 60 is going to be the first number in the second group. So this first group here, 50 to 59, that's my first class, my first grouping. So this is going to include all of the scores between 50 and 59. Then my next group is 60 to 69. And then we have 70 to 79, 80 to 89, 90 to 99. That's not how you write a 99, let's erase that. 99 and then our last group I'm going to go ahead and just call this 100 plus anyone who got 100 or higher in this last group. So now we talked about the class width and how it needs to be the same throughout the distribution. So that's the difference between the first number in the first group and the first number in the consecutive group. So here we see we have a width of 10. There's a difference of 10 between 50 and 60. Then the next difference, 60 to 70, is also a difference of 10. So again, our class width is 10. 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100. All of those have a difference of 10. I didn't randomly decide, oh, I'm going to go from 50 to 70, and then 70 to 80, 80 to 90, because then that would not be the same class width throughout. Alternatively, another way that I could have labeled these, this first row, I could have done 50 to 60. I could have put a hard bracket next to the 50. That means that I am including 50 in this row. If a student scored exactly 50, they go in this row. And then next to the 60, I would put a parenthesis. That parenthesis means we're going to go up two, but we're not going to include a student who scored exactly 60. 59, yes, 60, no. So then the next row would be hard bracket 60, 
to 70 parentheses. Okay, so what I just did here in purple, that's an alternative way to write the classes that we have for this distribution. So now I'm going to go ahead and look at the frequencies. So first I'm going to do a little bit of erasing up here in the table. Just a little bit. All right, so now our first class was 50 to 59, or 50 up to but not including 60. So basically anything in the 50s. So I have one number in the 50s, I have a second number in the 50s. So I have two values in the 50s. So now I'm gonna look for 60 to 69, or 60 up to but not including 70. So everything in the 60s. So I have one here, two, I've got two in this group as well. Now 70 to 79 or 70 up to but not including 80. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice by the way, I'm not crossing out the numbers when I'm marking that I've counted them. I'm just putting a little check next to them, okay? Sometimes we're gonna have multiple things that we're doing with the same data set. So we don't wanna be going through and crossing out the numbers so much that we can't read them because we never know if we're gonna have to come back to those numbers later. All right, and then 80 to 89. One, two, three, four, five. 90 to 99, one, two. And then 100 or higher, we have one. And then just like we did before, with the qualitative data, I'm gonna go ahead and put a total down here. And I'm just gonna add this up, make sure I didn't miss anything. And my frequency column does in fact sum to 20. We have four, plus eight is 12, plus five is 17, plus two is 19, plus one is 20. And we were looking at 20 students. So now I know that I didn't miss anyone and I can go ahead and move on to the relative frequency. Relative frequency is calculated exactly the same way as it was for qualitative data. You take the frequency for that row and divide it by the total number of data values you had or the total of the frequency column. And then you can write it as a decimal or you can write it as a percentage. It really does not matter. Um, that's gonna be 0.4 or 40%, 0.25, or 25%, 0.1, 10%, 0.05, And then again, we wanna sum this relative frequency column, make sure it sums to one or 100%, or very, very close to that. If it's off by a tiny bit, that's okay. It just means that you, we had to do some rounding. So maybe go back and double check your rounding. Make sure you didn't mess anything up with that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we do in fact get a sum of one and 100%. And now we have organized our quantitative data.